This is Tom Dewey, Middle East American, living in New Jersey, near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you want to visit my website, you can type Cody Dewey. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. Reading about Roger Ailes. A I. This is Tom Duty, testing. Middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. I'll be reading uh, breaking news about Roger Ailes late this week. It's today, it's Sunday. Late this week. Gretchen a Fox News media pro of formerly of Fox and Friends had been fired and the the news this late this week was a, a lawsuit against uh, Roger Ailes who's the chief of Fox News So Gretchen's lawsuit fed the news reports and that kind of happened perhaps in Thursday's news. And then New York Magazine breaks a story with uh, more uh, alleged victims of harassment. So we haven't had a business day since the news broke. The version I'll read is, is reported to have been sourced from Hollywood Reporter. However, I believe most of the... Well, I, I, I just... I don't think Hollywood Reporter got this story. Um, thank you. But uh, they don't give credit to New York Magazine. So I won't either, but I believe there is. A, I suspect there is a connection. And they also don't credit a writer. I always try to credit a writer when I can. I'm unable to on this occasion. So here we go. Six more women. So that's seven in total. Six more women accuse Roger Ailes of sexual harassment. The Hollywood Reporter, the uh, July 9th, 2016. <sighs> At least six more women have come forward to accuse Fox News chairman and CEO Ailes of sexual harassment, telling their stories to New York Magazine. Okay, so they did credit New York Magazine. I missed that. Gabrielle Sherman. In a story. Posted Saturday morning. The women, only two of whom give their names, others requesting pseudonyms, detail incidents in which Ailes either openly asked them to sleep with him or proposition them in sexually explicit ways. The two named women are former RNC field advisor Kelly Boyle and former model Marsha Callahan. The allegations date back to the 1960s when Ailes was a producer of the Mike Douglas show. The relevations come just days after former Fox News anchor Gretchen Carlson filed a sexual harassment suit against Ailes.
Carlson's attorney previously told The Hollywood Reporter that in the wake of the media coverage, Carlson's suit, coverage of Carlson's suit, women across the country have come forward. We're getting emails constantly this morning and this afternoon from women that say they have experienced similar behavior at the hands of Roger Ailes. Nancy Erica Smith said on Wednesday, those women, Smith added, would be witnessed in Carlson's suit, not parties themselves. New York Magazine claims that more than a dozen women have contacted Smith since Wednesday. Reading more. Roger Ailes claims Gretchen Carlson evading contract confidentiality obligations. <laughs> Carlson claims that her suit that she was fired in late June after Ailes reduced her presence on primetime shows. Dr. Pay and shunned her because she refused to engage. I'll let the Nino pass. Refused to engage in sexual relations or participate in sexual banter with him. She also claimed that Ailes removed her from Fox and Friends morning show in 2013 after she complained that her co-host Steve Ducey Ducey, that's D-O-O-C-Y, that's just like, that's the first I've seen that name, it's just like my name, you swap the second D for a C and you get Ducey, created a hostile work environment by engaging in sexual harassment. The new allegations against Ailes, all detail incidents that seem to occur before his Fox News tenure began with several taking place with Ailes worked for the Mike Douglas show. Boyle claimed that in 18, in, 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 in 1989, shortly after Ailes served as George H.W. Bush chief media strategist, she met him through her husband, okay, who worked for CNBC. Working in political communications for RNC, ooh, she told Ailes that she was set to sign a contract with a national Republican tri congressional committee. Before she did, though, she and Ailes had dinner. If you want to play with the big boys, you have to play with the big boys, she recalls. He claimed that's the way it works. She said, naming other women who he had slept with. She said that's how these men in media and politics work. Their friend, Boyle, recalls. I said, would I have to be friends with anybody else? And he said, well, you might have to give a blowjob every once in a while. <laughs> I told him I was going to have to think about it. <sighs> he said, no, if you don't do it now, you know, that means you won't. After her meeting in D.C., she was abruptly canceled. 
Ailes called her to ask if she had changed her mind. She said she turned him down, pointing out that she was married, committed to her husband. A couple of weeks later, Mayo's friends, who was high up in RNC, told her, word went out that you weren't to be hired, she recalls. Read more. Fox releases. Friendly handwritten notes Gretchen Carlson sent to Roger Ailes. Gretchen Carlson claims that she was asked to wear a garter belt and stockings to a meeting with Ailes then a producer on the Mike Douglas show in 1967 or 68. In that meeting, he asked her to lift her skirt up and strike different poses. She said he then indicated he'd hire her only if she slept with him and a few of his select friends, not just any old friends, select friends. <laughs> select friends who can't seem to get laid on their own. That's Those are the friends, she says. Callahan recalls, I said, well, if you think I have star quality and you can make money off my looks, I don't think it'd matter if I went to bed with you or not. And he said, oh, pretty girls like you are a dime a dozen. The interview ended shortly after, and she says, it went sub subsequent clip pa past Roger in the hallway. He pretended not to know who I was. A former model going by the pseudonym Susan says she was only 16. Dun, 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 dun. This makes Ailes a criminale. I guess sexual harassment is a criminal, but this ups the st up. This is a, a statutory rape, I think. There we go. End of reader's comments. A former model going by the name Susan says she was only 16 when Ailes propositioned her. It was 1967, and she'd sent over for a walk on part of the Mike Douglas show. He took her into the office and locked the door. She continues, he proceeded to pull down my pants and very gingerly, oh no, no, he proceeded to pull down his pants very gingerly, pull out his genitals and said, kiss them. <sighs> and they were red like raw hamburger. I was a kid. I'd never seen a man's privates before, she says. She jumped up, and he chased her around the office before pulling up his pants and revealing he had recorded the whole thing, instructed her not to tell anyone about what had happened. Read more. Gretchen Carlson says lawyer Fox News may be added to Roger's that that the, the Fox News may be added to the to the case. Another former model and actress going by the name of Jane says something sexual took place during a meeting she had with Ailes in 1984. As her agent was trying to get her into broadcasting, he had a model he had her model a garter belt <laughs> and stockings as well. She says, after that, something sexual took place, but I blocked it out of my mind, she says. I don't know if I engaged with him orally or he engaged with himself. I felt I was using, being used for his sexual satisfaction. I felt very threatened. Although he wanted her to take the lingerie home for the next time, 
She says she refused and left, adding that she regrets not telling Ailes off. Through the years, I felt like a horrible person because I allowed it to happen to me, and I didn't just say fuck off and walk out of the room. She says my husband doesn't even know. A media consultant going by the name of Diane also says she remained silent about the incident with Ailes in 1965 or 66 when she too was working at a model in Phil- as a model in Philadelphia and was called in with some other girls to meet with him for a skit on the Mike Douglas show. He took the women behind closed doors one by one, he says. When it was her turn, he made a move and indicated that she would have to respond to his advances to get the job. Roger Ailes fired back at Gretchen Carlson's deflam- defamatory, defamatory lawsuit as Fox launches internal investigation. He grabbed me and had his hand on me and forced me to kiss him, she says. When I recoiled, he said, well, you know, no girls get the job unless they're cooperative. (laughs) I just pushed him away and ran out of there. He was like, whatever. So no job for me. He did hire several of the girls from the group, but I don't know what they had to do to get the job. A former TV producer going by the name of Pat said she had an interview with Ailes as his Central Park South at, at his Central Park South apartment in 1975 in which he indicated she needed to sleep with him in order to get into the industry what industry is that I don't remember the exact words But the message was, if you want to make it in New York City, In the TV business, you're going to have to fuck me. And if you're going to do that with anyone, I'll tell you to, she recalls. I was afraid he was going to pin me down. He was a big guy, and I'm not big at all. He could have overpowered me. I remember running out of the apartment like my hair was on fire. I was standing on the sidewalk crying, thinking, what's that guy think I was? A prostitute? In one second, my dreams were shot. He's going to blackball me everywhere. I'll never get another interview. I'm not good enough. All that stuff, a 20-something girl thinks. It wasn't. That guy's a son of a bitch, and I should have kicked him in the balls.
In a statement released Wednesday, in response to Carlton's suit, Ailes claims her allegations are calling her defamatory lawsuit offensive and wholly without merit and said it would be defended vigorously. <sighs> Read more. Gretchen Carlson's lawyer says Fox News may be added to. We've already seen. This is retaliatory, re, retaliatory suit for the network's decision not to renew her contract, which was due to the fact that her disappointingly low well ratings were dragging down the afternoon lineup, he continued. When Fox did not commence any negotiations to renew her contract, Ms. Carlson became aware that her career with the network was likely over and conveniently began to pursue a lawsuit. Ironically, Fox provided her with more on-air opportunities over the 11-year tenure than any other employer in the industry, for which she thanked me in her recent book. The defamatory lawsuit is not only offensive, it is wholly without merit and will be defended vigorously. Uh, readers note, you may hear me repeating myself, that's just the way the, the way the tech, I did a screen capture and a paste and the, the, the visual presentation of this Hollywood reporter has some readouts that are repeated. On Friday, Ailes requested that the dispute to be moved, confidential arbitration, citing a provision in her contract. Carlson's team responded in part, it is disturbing that the head of a large media company would try to silence the press and hide from the public in a matter of such importance. In response to Saturday's New York Magazine story, Ailes, outside counsel Barry Ason of Epstein, Becker and Green released the following statement. Linking, linking to various articles that have been published since Carlson filed her suit, it's become obvious that Ms. Carlson and her lawyer are desperately attempting to litigate in the press because they have no legal case to argue. The latest allegations, all 30 to 50 years old, are in response, Carlson's attorney released the following statement, slamming Ailes' lawyer for trying to silence the women who spoke out about trauma they endured and years that haunts them to this day. Yesterday, in a statement to the press, litigating in the press, an Ailes spokesman challenged Gretchen's lawyer to come forward with other victims of Ailes' sexual harassment to speak on the record. Carlson's attorney, Nancer, Car Carlson's attorney, Nancy, Erica Smith, and Martin Hyman. Yes, his name is Martin Hyman. He has a brother named Buster. Martin Hyman said in a statement that they obtained by THR, today six brave women voluntarily spoke to the New York Magazine dealing with their traumatic sexual harassment by Ailes. We are hearing from others than Barry Arson's Ailes lawyer accused Gretchen of litigating in the press without any investigation. Within three hours, claims that the allegations are, how does he know that? Women have the right to speak out, whether Ailes likes it or not, even about trauma they endured years ago, and that haunts them to this day. Calling these women liars because they chose to speak out is despicable. Bullying threats will not silence these brave women, updated with statements from Carlson's attorney. So the updates are as recent as yesterday. Yeah, today's the 10th. The updates, uh, this is, the updates were July the 9th, uh, 2016. This has been Tom Duty living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google you'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, good evening, or restful night's sleep. Ciao.